Greetings, Pearl Citizens! It is I, your fearless leader once again, Will the Chill. You may know me by my legal name, Will Braswell, and here we are with another amazing episode of Pearl Town Hall. Welcome once again to my fabulously brilliant co-hosts, Dean the Machine Hampstead and Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Butler! All right, say hello, guys, so that we can make sure your microphones are working. Howdy from Texas. From California. How's everyone doing? Awesome. I think our audio is looking good. Okay, so this is, uh, this is our day three of the Pearl Conference. This is our third and final panel of the year. And uh, we're going to go through a few of the talks that we each thought was interesting today and, uh, and then maybe give a sort of wrap up um, when we're done. So we'll pass it over uh, since our software has randomly reassigned the order, um, then we will go right over to Tommy. Thanks, Will. I'm going to be honest, my favorite talks today were lightning talks and the bird of, uh, birds of feather talks. Um, I, there was a lot of substance in the keynotes and I'm sure I'm going to actually let Dean touch on those, but my favorite conversations were the conversations that we had in the birds of a feather talks and the follow up to the lightning talks, because we got to talk, um, ask questions, get clarification on, on all kinds of things. There was just really productive dialogue going on between the community, the, the pro foundation, I learned so much, and I'm excited about what's come out of that. It was an unfortunate technological mishap that, or technical mishap that my uh, my network went down during the the tail end of the conference, and so I got cut off literally mid sentence while I was talking with the the birds of a feather group. But I think that I had made my point, and the the point that I was making in that discussion was that it's my hope that. In, in the future, we can have a more cohesive and coherent message or, or messaging from the Pearl Foundation on Pearl.org a little bit. Oh, I see, I see Will giving me the cutoff. All right, Will, we'll kick it. No, back no, no, you. <laughs> you're fine. I was making fun of your, uh, your internet getting cut dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, how about you fill me in on what happened after my my connection got dropped? Because I didn't get to hear the tail end of that discussion. I'm kind of eager to find out. Which one was it? That's where we were talking about um, the merits of the idea of the Pearl Foundation having somebody as a dedicated resource who keeps the Pearl.org website fresh with new content and that the content specifically would be tailored around a central theme that we talk about at least once a year and we agree on as our theme for the year or our vision or our mission statement and that we would use Pearl.org as an outlet to allow people to demonstrate progress towards those goals so that we can show achievements, so we can show people having fun, so that we can show people doing community outreach, so that we can show Pearl winning and living and thriving and the other idea that was kicked around was how about we do something where people are allowed to or, or given the opportunity to donate um, yearly in an annual subscription to support this effort and uh, other similar efforts. And that people who, who give back to Pearl um, also get incentives back from the Pearl Foundation for having done so. Some of the ideas that were suggested were maybe whenever somebody does that, that they get a uh, free or <laughs> they get one ticket to the Pearl conference in the cloud, assuming that this is successful and we want to repeat it, that they get a cloud ticket, that they get, uh, that they become card carrying members of the Pearl foundation um, or supporters of the Pearl foundation, something to that effect. And that's kind of where I got cut off. 
Yes, that's funny because uh, hello to Darren Duncan and William Taylor and everyone else joining us. Lynn Fosifong, Fosifong. Um, sorry for any name garbles I'm making, but uh, Darren is pointing out, yes, well, this follow-up to the uh, Zoom birds of a feather happened quite quickly. In fact, we just finished that long meeting, and now we're getting on here. Um, but basically, uh, the, the idea was that uh, <laughs> several of us sort of simultaneously nominated Gabor uh, as being the person we would like to see to take over the Pearl.org uh, or Pearl.anything websites because he's um, the most active person that he's run the Pearl Weekly newsletter for umpteen years and uh, he can manage a team and, and he can keep it updated with fresh weekly content. So um, that, that was kind of the idea was, was we, uh, we wanted to nominate him through Steve Lembark and uh, who does not have access to Facebook, but when this gets reposted eventually on YouTube, he can, he can see it on there. And, uh, and that Steve was going to bring it to Mark Keating so that Mark could bring it to the Pearl Foundation. So we'll see if any of those things that I just described or any of those people will actually do what I just described. <clears throat> so yes, that, that was one thing. Um, I won't repeat anything that Tommy went into, but I'll, I'll leave that as the, as the end there. Uh, Tommy, did you want to say anything else before we pass it over to Dino? Um, sure, there was just one other thing that I uh, failed to mention, that as part of a paid membership or sponsorship, if you will, or that donation, that people would be given their own personalized page on Pearl.org where they can publish their own Pearl-related content. I'm sure that whomever uh, or whoever is the person uh, in charge of curating the content on Pearl.org would probably make a good moderator or be able uh, to recruit other people to help moderate that content. But I thought that that was a neat idea too, that um, as part of, a, of your donation that you, you might get something like that back. And we also talked about modernizing the Pearl website, and there was a little bit of a debate about why that would be good or what are we trying to achieve, and that's literally where I got cut off. I was saying, in my view, the thing that that achieves is that in a scenario where I'm going to bat for Pearl and I'm talking to people that I work with and for or people who work for me about using Pearl in our next project, it's a really easy sell to point to Pearl.org and say, look at everything that's going on there. Look at this vibrant community. Look at the technology that we've developed in just this last year. Look at these new projects. Look at these things that we could use ourselves. Why wouldn't we use Pearl? This is, this is a no-brainer. Okay. Thank you, Tommy. I won't give any follow-up, but we'll go ahead and pass it over to Dean. Okay. I just unmute myself there. Sorry. Okay. So today's lineup was... I think uh, another strong day. Um, a theme that I, I bang on a lot about is observability, which was addressed in a couple of talks today, which was really good. Uh, the, again, please forgive mispronunciations. You're going to get what you're going to get. Uh, at 8 a.m., there was a talk entitled System Observability and Distributed Tracing from a person named Theo Van Hosel. And that's sort of dived into open tracing and how there's a lot of effort right now to bring that functionality into the Perl environment. And the idea is basically that it's, it's agnostic, so you can plug it into different type of things. Um, you're not wedding your application to a particular uh, like backend, for lack of a better word, to collect the information and the metrics. You can, you can uh, attach them wherever you want. Uh, and I'll concatenate uh, my, my thoughts with a talk at 10 a.m. that was from uh, called Health Check, Diagnostics Results from Your Code, from Andrew Fresh. Now, apparently, a comment I made inspired Andrew to do this stuff, which is a bit weird. Um, yeah, go Dean. He, he, uh, he fleshed out a whole section of, uh, of new Perl uh, functionality called Health Check, which is available on the CPAN. And at Grand Street Group, they've plugged it into all their Perl-based uh, microservices, which allows them to have a common endpoint, I guess, 
as much as I despise the term endpoint, on their services where they can determine the health from the from the service, which they've then plugged into Nagios and uh, or Nagios, depending on how you want to pronounce it, and that allows them to ask the the microservice, "Are you healthy?" or "Do you think you're healthy?" rather than having something sort of external guessing at that it's healthy. So that's that's something neat that they've done, and they said they've already had good success with that. So that's that's a pretty neat bunch of stuff that people can look at uh, called Health Check in Camel Case on on Metacipan. But yeah, to bring those two topics together, that's certainly a topic that I have been <clears throat> going on and on about a little bit online, uh, because for myself, I do think that's an area that Pearl can really um, come to the forefront in terms of providing uh, observability, which is to see what's kind of happening inside your production code in real time. And it's kind of related to this idea of continuous profiling, which is basically running profiling in production, as insane as that may sound historically. Uh, you can actually, in today's world of massive amounts of CPU power and whatnot, you can easily get away with running uh, sampling of, of profiling on one or more servers and collecting that and seeing what's really happening in, in production. So I'm very passionate about that particular topic, having having worked on Perl for such a period of time. You can deploy things to production, and you can see uh, straight away if the behavior of the code has changed in a way that you want or in a way that you don't want. And bigger than just you could be uh, all sorts of other services that you're offering and consuming internally that might be databases of different kinds or or storage of different kinds. You can see if their behavior profile has changed in real time, uh, depending on how you've attached it. So my, I'm passionate about doing it a, a little bit more deeply than just in Plaque because I think you need to see a little bit more deeply. Uh, my previous employer, uh, we were very much aware of how much time the templates were taking to compile. We we're aware of how much time uh, the Oracle database was taking. We we're aware of Elasticsearch and these other things. And uh, when we made changes, we were able to see, okay, did we actually reduce the time that this took or not? And sometimes the opposite, like we'd run to production and suddenly see something taking up a lot of time. So that's an area that I feel very strongly about. And I feel like uh, Modulicious and Catalyst and Dancer, uh, they can actually provide a lot of those things and people can just consume them without thinking too much about them. Uh, the other the other talks for today, uh, I'll just I'll just touch on one more. I did listen uh, and participate a little bit in the midday. Uh, I guess it was a, a talk uh, improving the perception of Perl and Raku, which came from uh, well, it's attributed to Jason Chrome, Stuart McIntosh, Nick Evans, and Mark Keating, but it was presented by uh, I guess President McIntosh, and he went through kind of the all the different kind of main websites that are related to Perl um, and gave some criticisms, which I pretty much agree with all of them uh, in terms of <laughs> inconsistency and confused message and, and that type of thing. There was, I think everybody pretty much unanimously agreed. I didn't see any resistance to it at all. There was a lot of uh, concern about trying to force people to make their website look like something, but there was, I would say there's just as much people saying, we really want the Pearl Foundation to take stewardship or even, I guess you could say, ownership of a lot of this content and these websites and um, to, to provide more of a, a framework for people to contribute, I guess, rather than feeling like they need to take on everything. So there's a lot of, I rarely listen to a talk where I feel like, yeah, I disagree with everything in this. Um, it was great. So that was a few, I've taken up a bunch of time. But um, yeah, I think I'll just hand it back to you, Will, and we'll, we'll continue the conversation. Awesome. Thank you, Dean. Well, um, I, I also went to a number of uh, sessions today. The uh, TPF, uh, Birds of a Feather, that was before the official start of the conference. Um, Stuart McIntosh was, was talking there um, about a number of things, and it, it, it mostly went into a uh, open discussion but he was kind of describing how the TP some people think the TPF is the head and there's a, a body that's underneath it but really the TPF is more like a chain that connects many gears together 
And so that was an interesting analogy. Um, also, uh, other talks was Theo's talk that you mentioned, Dean. That was really um, interesting about Datadog. Um, I did not understand everything he was saying, but it looked pretty cool. And actually, I was thinking of you, Dean, when he was giving that talk. Because I was like, Dean probably uses this sort of thing. Um, uh, Ricardo's talk on the Pearl Debugger, former Pump King, Ricardo Cygnus, uh, immediate uh, past junior uh, past Pump King, and uh, he was right before Sawyer X, if memory serves. He gave an interesting demo of the Pearl Debugger. I thought that was cool. Um, Stuart McIntosh came back again with the marketing talk. Um, that one had all of those uh, comments that Dean was mentioning about how all the websites mismatch, and that later went on into the boff that Tommy was mentioning, the after-party boff, uh, where we discussed wanting to have Gabor help at least to have content, and then if we make the one main website look really good, then we can put out a CSS that the other websites can follow for free. Um, so that was an interesting discussion. Lightning talks were pretty cool. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> I did mention briefly that I, I did get to give a lightning talk yesterday as well, and, um, and I was following along with them today. So that was, uh, that, those were all um, suitably educational, I would say. Uh, we had the closing, and then we had this long after-party boff where we were just hanging around and talking. By the way, last night we did have the... Uh, bad movie night that was happening both before and after last night's episode of the Pearl Town Hall. And uh, that was, that was uh, pretty fun. I love having the bad movie night. So <clears throat> I, I, what I would like to do briefly uh, during the last bit of our show here is to, um, to give what we would consider to be our roses, thorns, and buds, which is what we do in the Boy Scouts. The roses are the, your favorite thing. The thorns were your least favorite thing, and the buds are what you would like to do better or different next year, whether we're in, in person in Houston, as Todd has proposed, or whether we're online again for another virtual uh, conference. So I, I will start with my roses. Um, I was very glad to get to see everyone, even though we are quarantined. I was very glad to get to give a lightning talk about the Pearl Community. Dot org, and uh, I was very glad that my dear, darling, loving wife from Paris, France, was able to give, she's looking at me right now with the stink eye, was able to give her first real talk. It was an actual real talk, um, and that was well, well received as well. So uh, I am also super stoked about Pearl 7, uh, Guacamole and Standard Pearl, uh, Core, Ovid's Core, and integrating all that into the R Pearl optimizing compiler and uh, how this all can perhaps fare well for the future if TPF will make a few things happen, if we can all pull together. Um, this may be the dipping point on the graph where we're not going down anymore and we start going back up again. So uh, I, I hope to put Pearl back on top. Um, with that, we'll, we'll try and make them brief, but I'll pass it over to Tommy for your roses. Tommy? Um, uh, I have a lot of roses, but you basically touched on most of them. Um, Pearl 7 is super exciting. I, when I think about the conference and the things that I enjoyed a lot, I, I've enjoyed this online format. It's super accessible, and it's, it's something that I hope that we'll do in the future. Really, if TPF is listening, I hope so much that we will do this in the future. It's, it's so much easier for me, um, even in times that that aren't coronavirus, uh, to get on a, on a Zoom meeting and give you $10 to, for that ticket to the conference in the cloud. That's much easier than traveling across the continental United States or maybe to another continent entirely so that I can be part of that conference. So I, I would say that was one of the biggest roses is just how accessible this format was. And I think it was noted during that Birds of a Feather call that there were more than 700 attendees. In, uh, in Sawyer's keynote. Uh, am I wrong, Will? It wasn't. Uh, we sold 500 tickets, and there was uh, 292 was reported. 272 was measured by me during Sawyer's talk, and that was the highest uh, attended one that I measured. And usually okay. we have between three to 400 at the largest in-person U.S. Pearl conferences. 
I, I guess I'm got the, I'm clearly got the number wrong, but still, I mean, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. And this is something that we can market and we can share. It's so easy to invite somebody saying, Hey, here, send me 10 bucks. Here's the link. Jump online. This is something you don't want to miss. It's, it's very accessible. I really like that about this year. Other roses, and, quickly, Tommy. I'll just cut it off right there. Okay, roses, <laughs> Dean. Can't hear you, Dean. Can't hear you. It's on mute. My mute discipline is too good. Um, yeah, I guess, look, do I have to come up with a different point? Uh, accessibility was a big plus i saw a lot of names for people registered for sessions from people who i i recognize and thought these people are not involved in pearl um they would never fly from frankly australia to the united states to to see pearl but they've just gone hey 10 bucks uh, not a big deal uh, i can i can tune in and they didn't even have to pay they could just jump on youtube uh, so they decided to pay ten dollars and um, US, which is obviously a little bit more in Australia, and to tune in to see what's happening and, and jump on there. So I think in terms of casual uh, engagement, big, big win. Um, but again, if you want to go to the thorn, the other side of it is to a certain degree, you're not as close to each other. You're not as um, able to communicate with each other. Um, you're not as able to go out afterwards and enjoy, um, you know, an evening in whatever the city is that you happen to be in or that type of thing. You just kind of like click hang up and go check your email or whatever. So that's, there's pros and cons. Um, who knows what the future holds? I suspect more online presence for the conferences will be helpful. I would certainly make the argument that you don't have to necessarily have one or the other. You can have both. You can even do either. There's no reason not to have an in-person conference once a year and maybe even an online conference once a year. Like you, you have access to a lot more speakers um, online and you can have people come in from, you know, all corners of the, of the globe to give their talk that might not otherwise be able to, to fly to uh, the North America or wherever the case may be. So, yeah, I think that's, that's the pros and the cons of it. Um, you know, the downside as well is you don't see people hacking on code, um, you know, during the, the, the speakers and stuff or fleshing out um, proof of concepts on the spot, um, you know, doing pull requests on the spot. But I'm sure they're happening anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dean. And uh, although I by no means can speak for Mr. Ronaldo, um, I believe that Todd will continue as the uh, leader of the TPF conference committee, at least for North America, and, uh, and that regardless of, of whatever happens with the virus between now and next year, I think he has essentially stated to us that it will be a hybrid format. So, uh, so it will be an actual in-person conference, so those who want to travel can, and uh, we'll also have everything set up through Zoom, at the same time. And those who want to do the online $10 cheapy quickie version can do that as well. So um, yes, I'll, I'll uh, take a moment because we've had, hello, Mr. Uh, Magana. We've had quite a few people and comments here that I should, uh, I should look at and mention um, because uh, Darren Duncan, um, pointed out quite a few things. Bad Movie Night was mostly us making our own bad movie because we couldn't get the movie to play for an hour. Um, this is the inflection point of Pearl from going down to up. Uh, 256 and 500 people, 700 people was at the last big event in Texas. Okay, so uh, yes, thank you guys for your input on that and give us any other comments you have during the rest of our live show. Going on to my thorns, um, I was sad that I did not get to see everyone in person, um, and uh, I was sad that I did not get to, uh, to sort of sit with Bulk 88 and work out all the Windows bugs for this year or whatever that I was planning to do, like Dean was mentioning, doing actual code hacking and so forth. Um, I, uh, I guess it, it, missing friends was one of the biggest things. Um, other thorns would be... 
uh, I don't know. The, that, that was one of the main ones, but mm, not getting to see something cool in a new city, not getting to uh, have a, a longer movie night, because usually we watch two or three bad movies. And uh, <clears throat> I guess we were less... It seemed like we were less productive than we could have been if we were in person. Just my assessment. So I'll pass it over to Tommy for his thorns. Uh, oh, Ashley says hello. Um, so I guess the the only thorn that I felt was slack. <laughs> I enjoy IRC a lot, even though I'm not on IRC. IRC is just so easy. I know that it's difficult if I'm behind a corporate firewall, but IRC doesn't make my processors heat up by an extra 20 degrees Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> Slack was really um, was really laggy and made it difficult to type. Uh, I know that Slack is uh, well. Some people are fans, but I'm not. So <laughs> that was my thorn. Okay. Any other thorns from Dean? I'll, I'll chime in and take a few seconds. So I'm not a huge fan of Slack, but it is what it is. You know, um, the company I work for does ban Slack, so. That's, that doesn't bother me at all because I don't really enjoy it. Um, but, hey, it's it's kind of easy, and there's a few things about it that make it nice. Uh, being able to spin off a thread is pretty nice as well rather than sort of everyone kind of conversing in this big um, jumble in the middle. That's a nice feature of it. Uh, but if I can if I can take just a minute to reflect on uh, some of the conversations that are kind of live in the Pro Programmers Facebook group, uh, I think people should jump on a few of them and have a chat. Uh, someone whose name is Anders has asked, what's the current status of strong typing in Perl, either in core or at least core facilities for supporting third-party modules implementing it? So that's a good question. There's 26 comments and counting on that particular comment. Lots of thoughts. Um, another person, again, apologies for mispronunciation. Uh, I think it's Vlado, Vlado maybe. I'm sorry. Uh, he asks, to add to the wish list what Perl needs, I think that use of sigils and special variables is great in general procedural programming, but it starts to hurt a bit in OOP. So he, he goes on to say he kind of likes to see dots rather than arrows. Um, there's 20 comments on that. I, I, I can't agree with him on that, but I did mention a lot of stuff in that. Um, in the comments of that question about some of the things that I would like to see kind of moved from peripheral modules, maybe to core modules, or even into Perl itself. Um, stuff like try, which can probably come in from uh, keyword syntax try. Um, gather is another thing that would be nice to bring in. Hash multi-value would be good to, to sort of bring in to core Perl. Um, future async await, again, I think it really needs to come into core Perl. And uh, something like auto clean probably needs to come in as well. So I, I'm not as worried about necessarily uh, big changes like getting rid of arrows and replacing them with dots. I, I, I hear uh, Sawyer on a lot of the syntactic oddities that we can get away with, like having white space between Q and the delimiter. Um, but I think there's some other things that we can kind of talk about um, that people may or may not be familiar with. Just scrolling down. Yeah, so there's, there's a few other conversations there. Um, I've been trying to post a weekly Pearl Wins thread so that's buried a bit under comments, but scroll on down and see if you can find Captain Picard and tell us what some tell us some wins you've had with Pearl this week outside of the conference, and so we can learn from you guys and girls and everybody else. I do love Captain Picard, and I get excited every night when I get to watch Captain Picard. And my wife bought me a Captain Picard lawn gnome for our anniversary. So yes. Don't tell people about our lives to everybody up on the internet. That's what she's telling me right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, moving on, finally, our buds. What would we like to do better or different next year? And I will just assume that we'll have a hybrid next year where you can go in person or online if you want. So what would I like to do better next year? Oh, boy. Um, be more productive, get more coding done. Um, listen to more talks, even though I listen to a lot this time. Um, I want to have my travel plans worked out more well in advance so that I can focus on just the cool stuff of the conference. 
yes, very funny. Upside down glasses. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> you guys look funny. And uh, what, what other buds did we have? Um, uh, Benny wants to give two full-length, hour-long talks next year. She's laughing at me now. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that we can just uh, um, try and uh, make, make this the beginning of a much bigger thing for Pearl. This could be the, the inflection point, as Darren said. So, more of everything. Okay, no, that's not a good answer. But we'll pass it over to Tommy for Buds. I, I uh, failed to mention that one of my roses was that the, the Pearl Foundation did a birds of a feather where they were like, okay, talk back to us. So I really want to give them props for that and say thank you for letting us talk with you, letting us see you, interact with you, get to know you, find yeah. out who you are and how you feel and what you're thinking. Um, what I'd like to do better next year would be that uh, it would be my hope that this time next year we're having a different discussion about messaging around Pearl, that we're not having the same discussion again, because that was a point that a lot of people made, was that we're, we're, we're just having the same talk again about Pearl.org. Let's get this right. So next year, uh, if, we're, if we're doing things right, then I'd like to have a discussion about where we take that next instead of, well, why didn't we do it? So that's my hope. Okay, and finally, Buds from Dean. Well, for me, it would be good to see the conference in person again, obviously with the extra appendages of online content. Uh, hopefully, we can get uh, another great location. Um, with any luck, a little bit more fundraising, maybe we can bring it to California even and uh, bring it to the heart of Silicon Valley and the heart of well, everything except for Pearl, frankly. Um, but yeah, Zip Recruit is here. There's a few Pearl people here. Um, but yeah, that would be good to, to go to somewhere that people can really come together and enjoy. Because um, for me, at conferences, I, to be honest, I don't really go to much of the speakers. I usually just catch them afterwards on YouTube. For me, a lot of a conference is just meeting people and uh, making contacts and having conversations and going out afterwards and uh, that type of thing. So yeah, uh, my take on conferences is different to the average person. So I, I'm sort of happy to have it in person and to meet people. So that's my thoughts, Will. Okay, awesome. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the roses, thorns, and buds of the Pearl Conference in the cloud 2020. So um, I, I would just like to reiterate my one main biggest thing, uh, my final ultimate thought for this entire conference is the number seven. This is the big thing. Everything else falls under that right now. There you go, exactly. Everything else cool is going to be part of the new energy, the new impetus and momentum of Pearl 7. Um, so yeah, that's my final thought. Tommy, any final thoughts? Pearl's awesome, and it makes me really happy to see this conference happening this year and all of the people, some of new names and some old familiar names. Love it. All right, Dean, final thoughts. Everyone out there who's listening, uh, live or otherwise, uh, send Will a direct message and jump on next time and let's hear your perspective on everything Pearl. And because I'm not right, and Will's not right, and Tommy's not right, we're all just here together. So if we're wrong, come and tell us we're wrong and why we're wrong, and maybe we can have a good conversation. Yes, thank you, Dean. We would love to have more special guests in the future. Well, for now, this is, uh, this is us ending our episode, the Pro Conference in the Cloud panel, day number three on the Pearl Town Hall. This has been Will the Chill, Tommy Butler, and Dean Hampstead reporting to you live from somewhere out in space. Thank you all for joining us. Stay safe, stay cool, and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.
and cut. 